In this video, we describe how ionic solids are packed. All right, uh, this video follows an explanation of how metal, metals pack and a description of the three types of cubic unit cells that there are for metals. Uh, we have that those are face-centered cubic unit cell, body-centered cubic unit cell, and simple cubic unit cell. All right, so it turns out that for ionic solids like sodium chloride or cesium chloride, uh, uh, you have two different particles to consider. Uh, one type is the anions and the other one is the cations. Generally, the anions tend to be larger than the cations and uh, uh, what that ultimately means is that uh, it's quite common that uh, ionic solids can be described as a packing of the anions, much as metal do, metals do in a face center cubic or simple cubic, and then the cations are going to be in the holes or the cavities uh, left behind or left uh, in between the packing of the anions. Okay, so the idea is that uh, anions is packed, so you can describe this simply as a packing of anions, and then the cations are in holes. And again, this is fairly general. All right, so we then need to discuss, we, we understand where the anions are going to be. Again, this is going to be exactly the same thing as uh, metal atoms were in the regular cubic packings. Right, so the question is, well, what about those holes? Where are the cations? Well, so uh, let's then talk about the possible holes that you can, you can get in, in typical packings. All right, so I'm going to have here uh, an explanation of various types of holes. If you have a closest pack structure, like for example, uh, a closest packed cubic uh, lattice, uh, and that would uh, come up from a face-centered uh, cubic unit cell, uh, this is how one of the layers of the uh, anions would look like. Right, and here you can see already that there's holes in between the anions. You have a hole there, hole there, hole there. Those are called trigonal holes uh, because they are in the uh, space in between three anions. Uh, it turns out that uh, these holes are actually very small and for ionic uh, or binary ionic uh, compounds like sodium chloride only uh, uh, one uh, anion and one cation they are never occupied by cations because they are too small okay so those trigonal holes we're going to uh, forget about them for now now there are other types of holes that happen in between layers okay so this is uh, yes one layer but now we have to put another layer like this on top Right, so here's uh, a, uh, a tetrahedral hole. Notice that I can take one trigonal hole like that and then uh, can put one sphere like this. And now what I have is that uh, there's four spheres uh, nearby. Right, and then uh, the geometry of that hole is what we call tetrahedral. Okay, so again, that will be a tetrahedral hole. And those two exist in closest packed structures. Right, uh, there's yet another type of hole which is octahedral. Right, so what I'm going to do is show you how that octahedral uh, uh, hole would work. Okay, so instead of putting here just one sphere uh, uh, in the tetrahedral hole, I'm actually going to put um, uh, a few more. Okay, so uh, this is how you would pack now uh, uh, spheres, right? So you still have a tetrahedral hole right there, but notice that there's a new, a new hole that emerges. Right here, I have a trigonal hole in this layer. Uh, but notice that I also have a hole in the second layer. Okay, so what I have there is what we call an octahedral hole, which is formed uh, uh, by uh, the space in between six spheres. You will have this one, two, three in the top layer, and one, two, and three in the bottom layer. Right? You have the other trigonal hole, and here uh, you would have now uh, that one that octahedral, octahedral hole uh, uh, on top. You can actually kind of see through. Right, so that's, uh, uh, that's how, how the holes appear in uh, closest pack lattices. Now, if we were to think about not closest pack lattices, uh, for example, if we take a simple uh, cubic lattice like this one, then the idea here is that there's actually only one type of hole, right, that is the unit cell, uh, and that hole is just going to be in the, uh, in the middle of this cube. Okay, so uh, these are the three types of holes that we're going to be worried about, worrying about for ionic solids. You have a closest pack lattice, then you're going to have tetrahedral holes and octahedral holes. And then you have a cubic, uh, a simple cubic lattice, then you're going to have a simple cubic hole. 
Right, so for the rest of this video, we're simply going to look at, uh, we're going to count how many types of uh, holes of each type you have per unit cell. Okay, since we have here the simple uh, uh, cubic lattice, we're actually then going to count how many holes you have in this, how many cubic holes you have in this simple cubic lattice. Again, okay, notice that this is the unit cell, and uh, uh, we have seen in other videos that uh, each one of these atoms or these spheres is shared by eight other cubes, right? So only one eighth of the sphere belongs to the unit cell. That means that you only have one atom per unit cell. In this case, would be an anion. The question is, how many cubic holes do you have in the lattice? And it turns out that there's actually only one uh, also as well, right? So uh, in this particular case, what you have is that the unit cell in simple cubic packing, uh, you would have one uh, anion per unit cell and then one cation per unit cell in the cubic hole uh, formed by the eight uh, uh, anions that you have at the corners. All right, so that is your, your simple uh, uh, cubic uh, packing. Now, what happens when you actually have the closest pack uh, structures where you can have both tetrahedral and octahedral uh, holes? How do you actually count how many of each you have? All right, so let's, uh, we're going to do that uh, slowly. Let me actually just sim uh, write here uh, the number of holes that you have. So if you have simple cubic, you'll have sim only one cubic hole. And then uh, we're now going to look at the closest pack uh, structures. It turns out that uh, generally it's very common that the anions uh, will pack in a face-centered uh, cubic unit cell, which again gives you a closest uh, packed lattice. Okay, so for an FCC, face-centered cubic. Now we're going to worry about tetrahedral holes. And then octahedral. So we're going to count how many of them uh, we have. Okay, remember that uh, in a simple cubic cell, you just have one atom or one anion per unit cell. And in the uh, face center cubic unit cell, you have four anions per unit cell. And we're going to review that and then contrast it with what you have for uh, tetrahedral and octahedral holes. All right, so let me build um, an FCC unit cell. Uh, let's see. Ah, here we go. All right, so the uh, face center cubic unit cell is going to be built uh, like this. Come. Okay. Right, that is your uh, face center cubic unit cell, uh, where you have that uh, there's uh, anions at the corners of the cube, right, uh, where my fingers are, and there's also anions, uh, one in each one of the faces. Okay, so when we count, we see that there's uh, eight anions in corners. That will be one anion total per unit cell. And then there's six anions in faces, because those are uh, shared by two cubes. And then you will have three total anions coming from the faces. So the total is four anions in the face center cubic unit cell. Now the question is, how many holes uh, uh, that are tetrahedral and octahedral will you have here? All right, so let's take a look at the tetrahedral ones. Notice that uh, if I actually remove this atom that I have right here, notice that the space left behind right here, that is a tetrahedral hole, right? Because it's the space form in between uh, one to three, and then four atoms, or four anions, right? So you'll have here uh, one tetrahedral hole, and of course you're gonna have one of those for each corner, because we have eight corners, uh, that means that we're gonna have eight tetrahedral holes in our face center cubic unit cell. Okay, so that is going to be uh, eight tetrahedral holes. All right, so what about the cubic? Um, what about the cubic holes? Well, uh, the idea here is that um, uh, there's going to be a cubic hole right in the center, right? So notice that that is uh, a trigonal uh, uh, side. You have another trigonal hole right there. When you put them together, there is going to be a hole in between those two, right? So there's one right at the center of this cube, which is hard to see right here. What about elsewhere? Do we, where, where else do we have octahedral holes? I want you to now look at an edge, right? So think about this edge. Uh, here, uh, you only have that this hole that we have right there in this unit cell, 
uh, is formed by one, two, and three, and four atoms, right? But if you put uh, uh, the uh, unit cell that is right here, the unit cell that is right there, and right here, now you will have one, two, three, four, five, and six. Right? So this hole that you actually see here in the edge, which is incomplete, right? that is an octahedral hole that is being shared, uh, is, is happening right along the edge. And because the edge is being shared between four uh, unit cells, right, only one-fourth of that uh, hole that you see right here belongs to the unit cell. Okay, again, so there's uh, one hole in each of the edges that you have right here, and that is octahedral, but that is being shared by neighboring unit cells. So let's then calculate how many uh, holes you have outright per unit cell. Well, you will have one per edge, right? Uh, but that is shared by four uh, unit cells, so there's only one-fourth, okay? Uh, in each one of these uh, holes belongs outright to the unit cell. But because you have 12 edges in a cube, then 12 uh, edges times one-fourth of hole per edge, that's going to give you three octahedral holes coming from the edges. If you add to that the one that you have in the center, then there's going to be four octahedral holes in the entire SC unit hole, uh, unit cell. All right, so you can now have that there's uh, four octahedral holes. All right, so uh, this uh, is going to conclude this short video, giving you an introduction of uh, the types of packing that you expect in uh, Unix solids, and then how anions they tend to occupy uh, where the metals pack in uh, the regular packings that we have seen, but then the anions uh, pack in the cavities left behind between those and ions. Okay, depending on the unit cell, whether it's cubic or face center, you're going to have different types of, key, of holes. And then we've actually been able to count that for a, a simple cubic uh, lattice, you're going to have one cubic hole. But if you have a face centered uh, unit, uh, unit cell, uh, you're gonna, then going to have uh, eight tetrahedral holes and four octahedral holes. Uh, in the next few videos, we're going to calculate uh, uh, the geometry uh, of the octahedral holes. And then we will see that depending on the relative size of the anions and the cations, you would, be, uh, you would prefer uh, to pack uh, according to uh, any of these systems. And again, that is going to be governed by the relative size between the anions and the cations.